Hello lovely internet strangers. In today's video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be taking the political compass test. Now I've taken this test a few times before and I'm honestly not a huge fan of it, but a friend of mine not too long ago requested that I take it and share my results. So I humored him and it got me thinking that doing the political compass test in a video might be a good way to generally share a little bit more about my political beliefs with my subscribers. Since most of the time I talk about feminism, and SJWs, and I don't talk as much about political issues, but I do want to cover a book that I read called Illiberal Reformers about the origins of the progressive movement at the turn of the 20th century. And so I thought that before I did that, it would be good if I shared a little bit with you all. The diehard subscribers will know that I'm libertarian, but now you shall see what quadrant the political compass test assigns me to. I also thought that if I recorded myself taking the test, I could discuss as we go along what my reasoning is for each question, and I could discuss some of my issues issues with a lot of these questions. So let's get started. For those who are not familiar with the political compass test, they are not questions so much as propositions that they then ask you to either strongly agree with, agree with, disagree with, or strongly disagree with. And for those of you who are not psych majors, you may or may not know that this is what is referred to as a Likert scale. Sometimes you'll see the Likert scale with the neutral option, but I believe they intentionally leave out the neutral option here to force you to lean one way or the other, making their calculations a little bit easier. Each of the pages of propositions that they present falls under a different category. So this first page has to do with how you see the country and the world. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. I don't think that economic globalization should serve humanity and I don't think it should serve transnational corporations. I think it just is and it should function as it functions. So I disagree with this proposition. I feel like me disagreeing with this proposition puts me toward the right because then it's kind of making the assumption that I think that it should serve transnational corporations when I don't. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. Definitely disagree. My personal ethics come before any kind of allegiance to any country. No one chooses their country of birth so it's foolish to be proud of it. I disagree with this one. I don't think it's foolish to be proud of being an American but I'm not proud to be an American but I think the way I answer this question kind of puts me in that box anyway. Our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. I really have never understood that question. Like, are they asking about the human race compared to animals? Are they saying the race that I identify with among humanity, like the white race or the black race or whatever, as compared to other races? I don't know, so I just say disagree. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Definitely disagree with that. They might be a helpful temporary ally, but they're definitely not a friend, and it's very possible that they hold other views that are antithetical to my own, and there are other agendas that they have that are at cross purposes to my own. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. I don't think that people necessarily need to follow international law. I'm an anti-government libertarian, but I also don't support government use of force via the military, so guess I have to say disagree on that, which probably puts me in like a lefty direction on that one. Although this might actually be measuring more of the authoritarian versus libertarian dimension rather than right or left. Not sure. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. I have to disagree. I think that there is definitely a fusion of information and entertainment. Is it worrying? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything wrong with people sharing information in an entertaining way. I think a lot of people do sometimes get confused but I think those same people would have gotten confused by other things if they had lived in a different time period than now. I really don't think it's that hard to tease all of this stuff out if you're someone who doesn't just outsource all of your sense making to someone else. For me to say that this is really worrying, I would have to have more of a paternalistic stance to say, well, there's people out there that don't know any better, so we have to make sure they're not confused. And I really don't take that stance. Page two is about the economy. People are ultimately divided more by class than my nationality. I tend to agree with this. I think there's definitely a degree to which nationality divides people, not just because they have, you know,
know, some kind of patriotism or something. Because if you've been raised in different places, it's likely you have at least slightly different cultural values. And many people tend to just adopt those values and keep them throughout their lives. I think people will have more in common with people in other countries in their equivalent socioeconomic groups than they will with just a random person off the street who happens to be from their country. I don't strongly agree, but I agree. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I have to agree with that one. I know my husband is watching and I'm sure he's gonna shake his head at some of my answers here and there, or at least at my explanations of why I picked them, even if he agrees with me. But I think that controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment because with inflation, your money is worth less. And so that affects the people at the bottom more than anyone. Even if they can earn more money, their purchasing power is diminished. And the reason this proposition is being proposed is because a lot of attempts by governments to control unemployment has to do with causing inflation by, for example, what we're seeing right now, giving handouts, stimulus packages, etc. And you can go look at the increased prices of consumer goods and see that, yes, we've given people money, but that money is worth less than it was a year, two years ago. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Mm, this is a controversial one. I would say I disagree. I will be up front here and say that although I call myself an anarcho-capitalist libertarian, that that is a label that best describes me. I still have a lot of reading to do. I still have a lot to learn when it comes to how to explain these things to other people. Certain things make intuitive sense to me, but although my economic knowledge is leaps and yards above the average person, it's still not where it could be. So I'm just gonna say no, because I don't believe in state use of force. We'll leave it at that for now. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. All right, my understanding of this phrase means that people should produce as they are able, but the government is justified in redistributing what you produce to others that are more needy as they have decided that that is the case. I don't agree with that. I think that it's a good thing if we try to take care of people who are less able to take care of themselves through charity, through community, which we've definitely lost a lot in the modern West, but no one person owes some other random person the fruits of their own labor. The idea that we owe other people the fruits of our labors is just an idea that is used generally by authoritarians. The freer the market, the freer the people. Strongly agree. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product. I just don't really like how this proposition is phrased, but I think it's a sad reflection on our society. Not necessarily. There's a lot of reasons why drinking water is a bottled product. Not all water is bottled water. People still have tap water. So I don't know that it's sad. It doesn't mean the bottled water is good. I just don't think that it's sad or bad either. It just is one of those things. So I disagree. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. I have to disagree with this one because I am a property rights libertarian. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. I'm gonna say I disagree with this one because I think that they're trying to get me to say that like the stock market is bad and it's bad that people make money through trading and things like that, which I don't think that it is. I think it's bad that that the government manipulates money and doesn't contribute anything to society. But in the system that we have with the stock market, I don't think it's regrettable that people make their personal fortunes that way. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. I disagree with that free markets. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Strongly agree. Look, it's cool if you want to be woke, if you want to be socially responsible or conscious, and you have a cause that you want to support, whatever. But the only thing that a business owes to anyone is profit to its shareholders. Other people are free to disagree and think that your company should be doing X, Y, and Z and take their business elsewhere, in which case you might pivot because you're losing profit profit and you need to deliver that profit to the shareholders, but ultimately it's about delivering profit to the shareholders. The rich are too highly taxed. Taxation is theft, yo. 
Strongly disagree. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. I definitely have to say I agree with this one. I have several health conditions. If I wanna spend a greater proportion of my money on my medical care to make sure that I get the highest quality care, then I should be able to do so. I wanna live in a world where we have a free market in healthcare and that innovations in healthcare are not held back so that over time, the quality of care available to the vast majority of people, and especially for those who are really poor and have a hard time paying, that that care will continue to increase in quality. The same as we've seen quality of life increase for people in poverty generally over time. And sometimes paying means that other people pay for you and not your insurance company, but like people who go to St. Jude's where other people donate money and get them access to a higher standard of care than they could otherwise afford. The alternative is to live in a socialized system where other people are going to make the decision for you about how necessary that medical care is, etc. Government should penalize businesses that mislead the public. I'm anti-state, but to the extent that governments do exist, I think that being anti-fraud is one of the few things that I can get on board with. So I'm just going to say I agree. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Definitely not. Strongly disagree. Monopolies only exist where the government interferes. All right, next. Next page. Cool, cool. We're a third of the way through. All right, my personal social values. I hate everyone. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Strongly disagree. I'm not pro-abortion. I am pro it being safe and legal, but it should also be rare in my opinion. But I think a woman getting an abortion is between her, the father of the baby, and whatever God she believes in. I do think that when you have an abortion, you are killing something living. I ultimately see it as more of a moral issue. You created this life. I think you should have the power to take it away way and you have to live with the consequences of that decision. All authority should be questioned. Strongly agree. Fuck authority. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In my heart of hearts, do I have fantasies of revenge like this? Sure. But in reality, is that where my morals lie? Not really. I have to say I disagree. I believe in self-defense, but not necessarily revenge or retribution in that sense. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Fuck yeah, strongly agree. School should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Fuck yeah, strongly agree. Government schools are a major problem, in my opinion. All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. I find this proposition really difficult to parse. Sometimes I think that it would be best if we have some kind of national divorce, like Michael Malice has talked about, where people who share similar values keep to their own kind, quote unquote. But I kind of get the sense that this is meant to suss out like my feelings about that based on race or ethnicity. So I guess I disagree. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. I think I have to agree with this. I will interpret spanking as any kind of corporal punishment. I actually had a discussion with a pretty lefty author at one point who said that he was not opposed to spanking. It wasn't like he was pro spanking and spanked his kids all the time or hit them all the time or anything. But he says sometimes physical punishment is the only thing visceral enough to save your kid from like an immediate danger. Sometimes that is just the best way to deal with it or it's what you reach for in the moment. And I don't think it makes you a bad person. Like have to isn't the word I would use, but maybe I would say it doesn't make you a bad parent to occasionally use corporal punishment if the children are of that certain age range. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I really have always been confused as to what this says about me in the political compass. I have to say that I strongly agree. I always kept secrets from my parents and I think it's natural that kids want to keep some secrets from their parents or even a lot of secrets from their parents, but I really don't know how that factors into the calculation. Like, does it make me more lefty or righty? or authoritarian or libertarian. Like, I don't really know. Like, 
I can see how conservatives would be like, oh, children shouldn't, you know, keep secrets from their parents. We should always know where they're going. And, you know, they should be like going to church and doing their homework and they shouldn't be running around, sneaking around. I don't know. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly agree. And the drug war. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. I find this question also difficult to parse. Like, are you talking about schooling for very young children? Are you talking about schooling for teenagers? Because I don't think anything that kids are learning in elementary school is really preparing them to find jobs. It basically helps them learn like the basic knowledge and skills that helps other people not think they're an idiot who doesn't understand how the world works, I guess, right? So you know about like gravity, how to do arithmetic. You understand some of the history history of your country. In my ideal world, I think for most of their lives, children would just have opportunities to follow the pursuits that interest them and opportunities to interact with people of a variety of ages, to find mentors, to work on projects, experiment with things. And then once they get into the teenage years to start thinking more about whether they want to be learning a trade, if they want to become a scholar, if they should be targeting college, or if they can just go directly into their chosen profession. And I think it's also talking about compulsory schooling, which I definitely am opposed to. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Strongly disagree. Do I think that they should consider whether they should reproduce and whether they should instead adopt so that they can raise children but not pass on genes that might give their children the same impaired quality of life that they've had? I think it's something they should consider. But again, I'm a libertarian. I don't support the use of force. So them not being allowed to is not a thing that I would support. I think we should give people all the information we possibly can about pros, cons, risks, benefits, challenges, etc., and let them make their own decisions. The most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. I have to disagree. I think it's important, but I don't think that it's the most important. So I'm going to answer it that way. I think maybe a more important thing for a child to learn is to regulate their own emotions, to develop autonomy, to develop their own sense-making, critical thinking, and to learn how to functionally interact with others. As Jordan Peterson would say, to be able to play the games of life so that people want to keep playing games with them over time. There are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. I have to disagree. I would say that for me personally, there are definitely societies throughout history or currently, I don't know if I would use the word savage, Savage, but that I would have to say are not as evolved as others. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support. I agree with that. So I think if that's the case, then fine, you've decided you're on your own, so you should not expect support from anyone. People might give you support if they care about you, but you should not expect it and it's not owed to you. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. I have no idea what this has to do with the political compass test. I guess I'm going to disagree. It depends on what happened to you. When you are troubled, like when I had a bad day at work, I shouldn't think about it. I should just keep busy with more cheerful things. Maybe it would be helpful to think through why I had a bad day at work and if there's anything that I can change that would make tomorrow better. Like sometimes if there's nothing you can do about a situation, then yeah, distract yourself. But I find this proposition really weird, to be honest. First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. I also have a really hard time with this proposition because I'm not sure what their definition of fully integrated is because I've known at least first generation migrants who for all intents and purposes had an immigrant experience, let's say. I can't speak for all immigrants or migrants. Maybe some first generation immigrants can become fully integrated, but like as a general rule, do we think that they're ever fully integrated? No, but I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that they can become integrated enough to get by and to raise a family and the second generation will probably be fully integrated. So I guess I'll say agree, even though I find this one kind of iffy. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. Probably I have to disagree. I'm not even going to try to parse that one. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. A hundred percent agree. Next page. 
Oh my God, we're only on page four. Okay. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Strongly agree. Hello, Patriot Act. A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. I mean, I guess? Like, I can acknowledge that something is true, but then also say that that thing has other negatives that would make me not want to choose it. Also, as someone who's anti-state, I don't want political system to be making all the progress that it wants to be making because that's going to make life worse. So have to say I disagree, I guess. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly disagree. Fuck the surveillance state. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. I have a hard time with this one. It's been a while since I've really given serious thought to the death penalty, but I think within the current system, giving the state the ability to execute people, I just don't think is morally correct. Although the alternative is giving them the ability to incarcerate that person for the rest of their life. And I don't know how I feel about that either. And I definitely feel that there are certain people that cannot be rehabilitated but at the same time, I don't necessarily feel like I want to outsource the power to the state to kill them. So I guess I have to disagree, at least with this proposition. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. Away with the authoritarian scum. Strongly disagree. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. Strongly disagree. People can decide what they think is art. I don't really care. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. I have to disagree. I think that just punishing people and not trying to rehabilitate them doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, at that point, that's where you just kill them, right? Like if you're not gonna try to rehabilitate them, WTF is the point. You just wanna make them suffer for the rest of their lives. It's not gonna undo what they did. I guess I have to say I disagree. It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. I have to say I agree with that, although I don't really know what we should do about that. I guess maybe that's something I have to read a little bit more about and think a little bit more about. But you know, it's really busy up in this head. There's a lot to read and a lot to think about. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. I mean, more important in which sense? I mean, without business people and manufacturers, life as we know it would probably cease to exist. Whereas with the writer and the artist gone, life would suck more, but it probably wouldn't cease to exist. But I kind of have a hard time like accepting this proposition because I feel like it's implying something something that I don't agree with, so I'm just gonna disagree with it. Why the hell not? Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. I don't personally agree with that. I think that most women see things that way. I think most women, no matter what job they're doing, no matter what amazing career they have, if they choose to have a family, I think they're always gonna prioritize that family over anything else, at least the functional ones. But I don't think women have a duty to be homemakers, especially in current year, I don't think they have a duty. A duty to who? You have a duty to people that you've, you know, made those agreements and commitments to. I know some households with stay-at-home husbands and the wife is having her high-powered career and honestly, they're happy. I don't think it works for the majority of people, but if that works for you, you know, do it. So I'm gonna disagree. I think answering agree with that would also put me in a more right-leaning kind of trad category that I don't really fit into. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Probably? Like, I guess I'll agree with that. I mean, I'm not like a super lefty crazy person, but I'm sure multinational companies are doing a bunch of unethical shit. It's been a while since I've looked into any of it. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Nah, fuck the establishment. Strongly disagree. All right, only two pages left, thank God. Religion. Okay, hopefully this will be easier. Astrology accurately explains many things. I have to disagree. Although I enjoy reading about the woo, and I'm kind of like an amateur anthropologist, whatever, when it comes to all the different woo ideas, but I don't think the basis 
as astrologers will explain it, accurately explains things. I think a lot of things that you'll read in astrology resonates with people, and if that helps you, cool, but I don't think it accurately explains many things. You cannot be moral without being religious. Strongly disagree. I was raised Catholic, by the way, for those who don't know, but I left it behind in my 20s. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Strongly agree. Some people are naturally unlucky. I guess I would agree. I think for whatever reason, some people just keep rolling bad dice throughout their lives, no matter how hard they try. I don't think that like large swaths of the population are naturally unlucky, but I think there are definitely people you can look at their life and think, wow, they just really got dealt a bad hand, you know? And I don't really feel like it was through any fault of their own. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Strongly disagree. All right, that was easy enough. Last page, guys. Let's talk about sex, baby. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. Strongly disagree. I think you should think very carefully before you have sex with anyone, but I don't have any morals associated with premarital sex or anything like that. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Agree. There are too many children that need to be adopted to deny them the possibility of a stable, loving household when the alternative can be being shuffled around in foster care in less than ideal conditions, to put it mildly. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Strongly agree. Do I think you should moderate your porn consumption? Yes. Like, I don't think you should be watching porn every day from morning to night, and maybe you should occasionally take a break from it. You know, give yourself a breather, but definitely it should be legal. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Hell yeah, strongly agree. No one can feel naturally homosexual. Strongly disagree with that. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. To kids these days, I disagree. I wouldn't say I strongly disagree. I think that there are definitely things where I'm like, eh? But I can't say that it's like gone too far. I don't think there's like some line somewhere that we can see and say that's too far. I think people police this, you know? If songs get too explicit, people stop listening to them. If movies get too explicit, people stop watching them. You have to vote with your attention, you know? And I think people have different tolerances for these sorts of things. For some people, certain content and openness about sex is not gonna be going too far. Whereas people who have like a high disgust sensitivity might find it distasteful. So different strokes for different folks. All right, now let's see where you stand. This test is old, 2001. All right, just for anyone who's not familiar, the political compass is divided into four quadrants and the axes are left to right on the horizontal and authoritarian and libertarian on the vertical. So you get authoritarian left, authoritarian right, libertarian left, and libertarian right. They denote left and right as an economic scale and libertarian and authoritarian as a social scale, which I find kind of confusing, but here we go. So I got a four on the economic left-right scale, which puts me on the right, and on the social libertarian authoritarian scale, I got negative 5.28, which puts me in the libertarian quadrant. So I am a right libertarian in the political compass. Now, when I took it a couple of weeks ago, I actually was further to the right and further libertarian. So I was 5.13 on economic left right and negative 6.05 on the libertarian slash authoritarian scale. So I honestly don't remember which questions I answered differently, which just goes to show you that me taking that test within a couple of weeks from each other, I got a different score. I still ended up in the correct quadrant. So for the most part, I do think this test can give you like a rough idea of your leanings, but I don't think it's like particularly meaningful for like explaining to other people what you actually believe or even understanding if you're kind of like starting out or kind of normie about it, what you actually believe. I think it's gonna lead you down some wrong paths before it leads you down the right ones. But I think it's interesting to take after you've kind of sussed out what 
your beliefs are and see where it puts you. So there you go. According to the political compass, I am a right-leaning libertarian. I generally describe myself as a libertarian when I talk to like normie people. If it ever does come up, I usually don't talk about politics at all when I can avoid it, except with people who are safe to talk to. And to those people, I would generally describe myself as an ANCAP libertarian, although sometimes I just say libertarian. It doesn't come up that often because the people I talk to know like the foundations of my beliefs. So they just use it as a way to like understand where I'm coming from. But otherwise it doesn't like come up a lot, I guess. I definitely want to do a lot more reading over the next year in libertarian thought and a lot more in economics. So I can even better understand things or even maybe argue with people, who knows. But I just like learning for learning's sake. So yeah, I hope this was kind of interesting. If you guys want to take the political compass test and tell me what your results are in the comments. For those of you who are like my regular commenters, you know who you are. That might be interesting. And as always, I welcome your feedback. If you want to yell at me, chastise me for one of my answers, how could I say that? Oh my god. You know, go ahead, leave that comment. If you just want me to elaborate more on a particular answer or ask a follow-up question that's occurred to you, feel free. Comment, DM me on Twitter, email me. I don't always reply immediately, but I do read everything and I do try to get back to you eventually. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.